Hi, welcome to WE O'Neill Safety Orientation video. This safety orientation program is provided to all workers and visitors on this project in order to raise safety awareness and promote safe practices. After you have read the information contained in this manual, you are encouraged to ask questions about any aspect of the safety program to the WEO employee administering the orientation. Once you are satisfied that you understand the project's risks, rules, and procedures, you will be asked to sign an acknowledgement form after which you will receive a hard hat safety decal as proof of completing this orientation. Make sure that the hard hat you wear on this project always has a safety decal on it, otherwise both you and your company will be subject to disciplinary action. Please take the safety orientation and guideline manual with you and use it for future reference. Remember that safety begins with good judgment and responsible actions on your part. Basic safety guidelines. Comply with good safety practices, FED, OSHA, and Cal OSHA, whichever is more stringent at all times. Be careful and respectful working around the public. We conduct operations in a manner that protects the health and safety of its employees, visitors, and the community. If there are any questions, first contact your supervision or the W.E. O'Neill project team. Personal protective equipment. Hard hats will be worn at all times during all phases of the project. Eye protection will be worn at all times during all phases of the project. Polarized, dark tents, or mirrored glasses are not acceptable for work inside buildings. Brightly colored shirts are not adequate. Reflective safety vests are required. Whenever any worker is required to work in or adjacent to traffic, whether it be on public, private, or construction roadways, each employee shall wear a brightly colored traffic vest with two inch reflective stripes to improve their visibility to auto, truck, and equipment operators. Hearing protection will be worn in the form of earmuffs or approved earplugs on all high noise level tasks. Respiratory protection is to be worn whenever respiratory hazards are present. Always refer to your company's respiratory protection policy for additional information. The user must be clean shaven and have received proper training. Each respirator must be properly cleaned and stored per manufacturer's requirements and your company's respiratory program. Where a respiratory hazard is not present, but the worker desires to wear a dust mask for convenience, dust masks can be worn without the medical exam, training, fit testing, and other requirements. A copy of T8 CCR section 5144 Appendix D, mandatory, information for employees using respirators when not required, required under the standard, a copy of this must be given to the worker. Proper clothing. All workers must wear clothes suited to the job, including work boots and gloves. No dangling or loose clothing or jewelry around moving machinery will be permitted. Shirts with a minimum of four inch sleeves are required. No muscle shirts, tank tops, or midriffs are allowed. Long pants, jeans, or cotton will be required. Shorts and skirts are forbidden in the job site. Work boots or hard-soled shoes are required at all times. No sandals, flip-flops, tennis shoes looking, etc. are allowed. Use of radios and cell phones. No radios allowed on site. No phones with earpieces are allowed while working. No use of cell phones while operating machinery, equipment, or vehicles. No use of cell phones while walking in construction or hazardous areas. If you need to take a call, stop what you are doing, step off to the side, and take the call. Housekeeping. Housekeeping is everyone's responsibility. Lack of housekeeping will result in back charges. Cleanup needs to be done at all times during all phases of construction. Flammable or hazardous waste, 
shall be placed in covered containers separate from the normal debris. Housekeeping Guidelines Return all tools, equipment, and supplies to proper storage after use. Coil hoses, cords when not in use. Do not block aisles, passageways, eye washes, showers, electrical panels, and or fire protection equipment. Keep floors dry and free from spills. Pick up after work is complete. Fire protection. It is everyone's responsibility to prevent fires. Whenever you are producing sparks, heat, or open flame, you must have completed a hot work notification before beginning work and a fire extinguisher within 25 feet and remove any combustibles. Housekeeping is an important part of fire and accident prevention. Housekeeping must be maintained at all times. Hot work notification is required to be obtained from the W.E. O'Neill project team each day prior to the start of hot work. Hot work includes jobs involving open flames, welding, cutting bracing, heating metal, thawing pipes, sweating pipes, applying roofing materials with torches, creating sparks or slag, etc. Electrical cords and ground fault circuit interrupters GFCIs will be used with all electrical cords, tools, and equipment. All tools, equipment, and extension cords are required to be inspected prior to use and defective equipment removed from service. Damaged cords and tools will be removed from the job site immediately. Electrical power tools must be double insulated or grounded. Household electrical cords and plug strips are not allowed on construction sites in the field. Hazardous waste. Flammable or hazardous waste shall be placed in covered containers separate from the normal debris open dumpsters. Subcontractors shall remove all hazardous and universal waste from the job site and not place those items in open top dumpster. These washout facilities are for cleaning tools and equipment. Some items that are universal hazardous waste, non-empty and not dry paint cans, non-empty aerosol cans, CRTs, cell phones, computers, etc., batteries, electric lamps, fluorescent tubes and bulbs, ballasts, solvents, adhesive, acetone and liquid nail, non-empty tubes of caulking, mercury containing equipment, thermostats, rubber flooring. Do not dump universal hazardous waste in dumpsters. Environmental protection. Materials which could leak or spill must be stored in double containment. Establish best management practices BMPs must remain in place and if damaged reported to the W.E. O'Neill project team. No materials are to be poured down the storm drains or into gutters. Fall protection. All employees are required to be protected from falls six feet and more. If guardrails, catch platforms, or nets are not in place, Personal fall protection systems are required. When to use fall protection, heights greater than six feet, leading edges, wall and floor openings, unprotected sides and edges, including trenches over six feet deep, above dangerous equipment, overhang brick lane, steep or low slope roofs, formwork and reinforcing steel, excavations, trenches, wells, pits, and many more. Ladders and rolling scaffolding. Always keep three points of contact when climbing or working from ladders. Inspect ladders before each use. Always face the ladder when climbing up or down. Only allow one person on a ladder at a time. Never stand on the top three rungs of the extension ladder or top two steps of an A-frame ladder. 
Keep the steps and rungs of ladders free of grease, oil, wet paint, mud, etc. to avoid possible falls. Ladders used for access to an upper landing surface should be secured against sideways movement at the top or held by another worker at the bottom. A-frame ladders must be used in the open position. Use non-metallic ladders when working with electricity, even when changing light bulbs. All rolling scaffold frames must be fully cross-braced. Wheels must be locked at all times when rolling scaffolds are in use. Follow weight limits on scaffold. Do not overload platform with materials. Working surface for rolling scaffolds is to be cleared of debris and means provided to prevent scaffold from rolling into hole and tipping over. Inspect the scaffold assembly before each use to see that it is assembled correctly. Barricades and floor openings. Barricades for safety purposes are to be determined in this order. Try to post a physical barricade, i.e. wall, orange fencing, etc. so a person cannot enter the area. If a physical barricade cannot be erected and the work area will exist for more than a day, consider stanchions and tape. Danger. Red. The immediate threat of death or serious injury. Do not enter areas with red danger tape. Caution, yellow. An unsafe condition that presents a lesser threat to injury. Look first to see what the hazard is, then can cross tape and if area is safe. Barricade consideration. Position barricade far enough away from the hazard so that upon approach, the individual is not exposed to the hazard. Six feet or more from the hazard may be sufficient. Barricade must completely surround the hazard. Sign to identify hazard, i.e. men working overhead, wet, etc. Floor openings. Two inches and greater must be protected with substantial and marked hole covers or physical guardrails. Tools. Guards must remain in place. Point of operation guards, double insulated of grounded three prong with GFCI protection, pressure on off switches, support or positioning handles. Tools missing guards or with damaged cords can be taken by WEO project team members. Powder actuated tools. PATs are those activated by a gunpowder cartridge. Only trained and authorized users may use PATs. Licenses must be on operator during use. The project engineer must authorize use of PAT. Clear area and post signage. Do not allow people behind the work area while PAT is being operated. Powder charge needs to be secured. Unfired charges must be disposed of as hazardous waste. Fired strips are to be picked up and properly disposed of. Operators must carry their certification card on their person in paper or electronic form. Electronic union cards that do not display the specific training are not acceptable. Work area controls. Dust, no visible dust. Use wet or vacuum processes to control dust generating activities. Concrete and cinder block saw cutting and breaking. Cleaning concrete slab with blower. Polishing quartz countertops. Mixing concrete or lightweight concrete. Fumes, control fumes. Smoke eaters or vacuum systems are used to control fumes. Noise. Some construction activities generate high noise levels. Wherever possible, please try to limit the impact to those around you. The time limit without hearing protection is as follows.
Equipment. Backhoes, excavator, and forklifts are designed for lifting and scooping, but not for hoisting. Hoisting with the teeth of a backhoe bucket or the forks of a forklift are not allowed. Hoisting must be accomplished via the manufacturer's literature. If hoisting point is not identified in the manufacturer's literature, hoisting must not be performed with this equipment. Forklift operators must be authorized to operate equipment by your company, wear a seatbelt, carry a copy of their forklift certification less than three years from date of training, obey all traffic signs and signals, be courteous to pedestrians, have headlight and tail lights if operating on the road, have a fixed slow moving vehicle sign or flagger when traveling in road, remain in seat while load is lifted or block load to prevent from falling, lower forks to ground when not in use. Heat illness prevention. Heat illness is a serious medical condition resulting from the body's inability to cope with the increased heat load. Heat illness may be mild initially, but can be severe or deadly if the body temperature continues to rise. Heat illness can also affect a worker's performance and increase the risk of having accidents. Supervisors, foremen, and workers should look continuously for signs and symptoms of heat illness in themselves and fellow workers. Supervisors, foremen, and workers should look continuously for signs and symptoms of heat illness in themselves and fellow workers, as listed in the table below. Heat illness can lead to heat stroke and can be fatal. Call 911 immediately. Subcontractors need to provide the following. Plenty of cool water in convenient visible locations close to the work area. Water should have a palatable, pleasant and odor free taste and water temperature should be 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. At least one quart of water per hour per worker Workers should drink about eight ounces or a medium-sized full glass every 15 minutes. Instruct workers that urine should be clear or lightly colored. Provide access to shade when 80 degrees Fahrenheit and hotter. Shade must be provided for all of their working force on site. If heat is 95 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter, implement high heat procedures as noted in Cal OSHA 3395 T8 CCR, including increased amount of water and number of rest breaks. Safety data sheets. SDS, previously known as MSDS, are provided by each subcontractor and intended to provide all workers with procedures for handling or working with the substance in the safe manner and includes information such as physical data, melting point, boiling point, flash point, etc. Toxicity, health effects, first aid, reactivity, storage, disposal, protective equipment, and spill handling procedures. All safety data sheets, SDS, are available for you to review at the WEO construction trailer. First aid kits, fire extinguishers, and lighting. Each subcontractor must have their own first aid kits on site with sufficient supplies to aid all of their workers. WEO's first aid kit is located in the job site construction trailer. Please inform a WEO employee before the use of any product from the first aid kit. Similar to first aid kits, each subcontractor is to provide their own fire extinguishers for their hot work operations. WEO provides general fire extinguishers throughout the project. 
For locations of WEO fire extinguishers, please see map posted in office. Each subcontractor must provide their own task lighting for their work areas. WEO will provide general access lighting. Drugs, alcohol, smoking, and weapons. Drugs, including medical marijuana and alcohol, are not allowed on the project premises. No employee or subcontractor will be allowed access to the site if the person is under the influence of drugs and or alcohol. Smoking and cooking are not allowed within structures. Smoking will only be in designated areas. Drug testing may be requested if a worker is acting suspicious. Weapons are not allowed on the project. These include handguns, rifles, shotguns, fixed blade knives, locking folders, or illegal knives brass or plastic knuckles, martial arts weapons, stun guns, mace, pepper spray, explosives of any kind, including fireworks. Incident reporting. All incidents defined as an unplanned, undesirable event that disrupts work activity, near misses, spills, and injuries are to be reported immediately to a WEO supervisor. Written incident reports and witness statements must be completed and forwarded to WEO supervisor by the end of the day. Safety Disciplinary Actions Workers must follow both their company's safety policies and procedures and WEO safety requirements. Failure to follow policies and or procedures will result in disciplinary action and or discharge from WEO job site. In the event of an emergency, number one, care for the injured person. Number two, get help. Number three, call 911. Number four, notify WEO Neal's project team.